About seven years ago, I'm at a local uh, social function down where I live in Monmouth County, and uh, somebody comes up to me and they say, uh, you know, the Army's moving Fort Monmouth down to Maryland, to Aberdeen, and uh, the state is setting up a, uh, an authority to decide what we do with the land. And um, I recommended you to be on this authority. I didn't think much of it and uh, forgot all about it. And about a month later, I get a call from the governor's office. Uh, would I come in for an interview? And I did that. And then a couple weeks later, they say, putting you on this board of this authority. And again, I thought, that's kind of neat. But about two weeks later, uh, I remember I'm at the airport in Beijing, and I get this email from the governor's office, and it said, would you be willing to be chairman of this authority? And all of a sudden, this is real. I mean, real, real. And I got two thoughts that just conflict in my mind. The first is, what a fantastic opportunity. Can you imagine having the ability to create a whole new town in New Jersey just the way you want to do it? A whole town? It's fantastic. My second thought, though, is I don't know anything about this. You know, I've spent my life in telecom research. I don't know anything about planning towns and all the things you've got to go through for that. Um, looking back on it now, I, I realized I was so naive. I had not, not a clue as to what would be involved in this project. I should have gotten a clue. My first public meeting, and all of our meetings had to be public because uh, that was the law, and we had a period for public comment. And the first person from the public to come up for the microphone, and I said, welcome. You know, thanks for coming. It's really good to have you here tonight. And he says, I read your biography, and you don't represent the people of Monmouth County. I call for your resignation. <laughs> this was a clue. You know, as this was not going to go down easy, <laughs> this whole thing. So... Um, this is going to be a short talk about the dreams and the realities of this wonderful thing that I was involved in. First, let's set the stage. Fort Monmouth has been down there in, uh, in Monmouth County for almost a century. Um, and it's the centerpiece of, of the Army's work in communications, electronics, computers, control, command. Uh, all the electronics things in the Army, they down there. I don't know if this is coming through. I just put on this slide a few historical tidbits about Fort Monmouth, things that I'm sure they would not consider these highlights. Uh, the first is uh, they built the radar shown in the upper right-hand corner there that uh, was in Pearl Harbor when the Japanese planes came in. If you can imagine being at that radar and, and uh, you see all this stuff on the radar, you think either we're going to be annihilated by this fleet of planes or... This newfangled radar doesn't work well. And you can imagine what they decided. The second thing, and I, I just picked out here, and I never realized this, that the, the spies, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, who gave the atomic secrets to Russia, worked at Fort Monmouth. I never, never realized that. In 1957, they auctioned off the last of the carrier pigeons. Uh, apparently, that was about the time they were through. And... Um, to, uh, in the recent years, they work on big projects like the Jitters Radio, the Joint Tactical Radio S System, which is a, was a $6 billion project. Um, um, maybe not a happy one, but uh, that's the kind of thing they, they work on. Now, they decided to close the fort in uh, 2005. This turns out to be a terrible mistake of the federal government. They thought they would save money doing this. It's going to cost them a couple billion dollars, but that's a fait accompli, and we're going to make the best of, of what what we've got here. Now, it's a terrible loss to New Jersey because more than 10,000, probably more like 15,000 jobs are lost, uh, the technical jobs mostly. Um, there are about 5,000 scientists and, and engineers who worked at the fort, and then another 5,000 to 7,000 who work in the companies that surround the fort and live off the contracts to the fort. Uh, and um, uh, it has about 1,127 acres of land, which is about two square miles of land. And it's got all the things that you'd find in a, uh, in a small town are already there. This is an aerial view of the historic district of the fort. Uh, you'll see the parade ground and uh, the officers, officers' housing line the 
parade ground on both sides, and those are historical ar artifacts. We have a lot of historical artifacts there that have to be preserved So, in this uh, picture. So the, uh, the, the entrance to the fort, shown right here, and you can't go there. The Army's been gone for a year and a half, but even for the last century, this has been like a black hole in New Jersey. It's a place where none of the local people have ever been. They don't even know what's in there. It's two square miles of black hole right there. We don't have to protect the secrets anymore, but vandals would come in and destroy all the stuff that's in there right now and steal it all, so it's still, it's still closed. Okay, so right now there's nobody there. I took a, um, I, I, by special permission, a bike ride through it uh, recently, and uh, the only residents are these deer that you see all over. And it's really weird because this is a town with no people in it. There's the theaters and all kinds of stuff, you know, and there's nobody there. It's like you're in some sci-fi sci movie where the aliens have abducted everybody in the town. Uh, so what we did, we hired staff and uh, we hired uh, then uh, Consulting Corporation, a big uh, national architectural firm to, to help with the city planning. And uh, we hired expert consultants in things like housing and transportation uh, and a lot of other things. And we took about three or four years to make a, a plan of every acre, what we want to do with that land to make a new, new town. Uh, and the overriding, the overarching theme of, of our planning was this was to be a place where people live, work, and play. Now, I know that sounds trite, but I live in a place where people live. They don't work there. I work in places where people work, and they don't live there. We wanted a place where you do all these things. And I can remember um, talking with a famous architect many years ago, and I said, what city would you like to live in? What do you think is the right place to live in? And he says, I never want to live in a city where I have to get in a car to buy a newspaper. I have to get in a car to buy a newspaper where I am. You know, it's that kind of thing. This is a place where we want a walking, a walking town, where the jobs are there, you know, the entertainment's there, and the, uh, and, and the people live right there. I, when I took this up, I, I said, my criterion for what I want to put there is quality of life. I want to improve the quality of life for people in Monmouth County and for all of New Jersey. You know, I learned, though, as the years went by since then, that uh, it's, that's not a simple criterion. I'm not sure what quality of life is, and I'm not sure whose quality of life you're looking at. The new people, the people that are already in the town, the people outside coming in, and it's all different, all different kinds of things. You see in the right-hand side of this slide, it's an overview of how we picture this to be 20 years from now. And by the way, we had to submit our plan to the federal government for approval. It wasn't the Army that had the approval, but HUD, the Housing and Urban Development. They took two years to approve our plan based on the single criterion of how we handled the homeless. So, we had to put in 1,100 pages of documentation on how we would handle the homeless, that kind of thing. So when you're looking down this, the green spaces here are all open spaces and parks. 50% of all the land would be open spaces and parks. There are uh, pedestrian paths, uh, bicycle paths, there's a marina, golf course, uh, uh, and there's integrated housing. There are three different uh, town centers within this property. As I said, it's about a little over two miles long and um, about uh, three quarters of a mile wide in various places. So, um, and jobs. We're, if we're losing these 15,000 jobs, can we replace them? And that is really, really, really hard. So just a few uh, views here, and I, I'm sorry I can't really go through them, but I'll go from east to west. And this is near the shore, the ocean port part of it, and three towns. Oceanport, Eatontown, and Tinton Falls. It will inherit the land when this is all through. But it, when you look down on this, there are, uh, there's a, uh, on the um, right hand, lower right hand corner, there's a, uh, a, a hotel on, the, on that inlet there. There's a marina on the other side. Uh, there's a hospital a complex and a health complex, and then there's a historical park. And this is what we picture the streets to look like. Uh, we want walking streets, places where people congregate uh, all hours of the day. Moving west to Eatontown, there's a te technology incubator. Uh, and uh, there's a town center for Eatontown, a new town center. 
another view of their uh, thing. And then finally, Tinton Falls on the far west side has an, yet another town center. There's a golf course, and um, there are uh, various uh, technology companies located there in the future. Now, there are a lot of buildings there, and they're not all suitable for what we, we want. And one of them there in this Tinton Falls area is this thing that's the Meyer Center. It's often called the Hexagon for a reason that I don't, really don't know. In the aerial view, you see the Garden State Parkway going down, and you can see this big building as you drive south on the, on the Garden State Parkway. It's six, over 600,000 square feet, and nobody wants a thing. And so it'll have to be torn down, as many of the buildings uh, demolished. And that's going to cost several million dollars, and uh, it's a real problem for us, and there are environmental concerns. And I was saying, you know, where is a predator with a Hellfire missile when we need one, you know? So, um, and the Tinton Falls Town Center illustration uh, comparable. Now, along the way, I've had a couple dreams of things that I wanted to do that really haven't worked out, and that's part of the realities of things. One thing I, I wanted to do, the little silver train station is only a half mile up the road, uh, and I, I, it's on this, where you see these two roads crossing with an X. Right in the middle of that X is the little silver train station. But one of these roads is actually the railroad track. And all I'd have to do is move that station a half mile down into the fort. And I would eliminate the parking problem and the traffic blockage problem that, that where it is right now. It would be easy to do. And it would benefit 99.9% .9 of all the people in the county. But there's 0.01% of the people who live in that little peninsula that goes out, and they don't want this thing in their backyard. So that's what you run into every time with these things. I wanted to have a fleet of driverless cars that would, you, you could call up with your cell phone and it would take you within the, the Ford area and to the local train station. Uh, and, that, and we had the teams from Carnegie Mellon and Stanford that won the, the driverless car competitions uh, in there and we worked with them and it was a great dream. But in the end, I didn't have the money to do it, and people were really worried about the liability when one of these things ran over somebody or something. It was really a problem. Um, I wanted to bring in a university, and we still leave, have land uh, demarked for a university campus. My dream is to get like a satellite campus of, of Stanford or something like that down there. We got the land for them that would give them, and uh, it's that, that's a long story. It's not working out yet. We'll see how it goes. But finally, uh, dealing with the realities. And uh, again, things that I never expected. There are hecklers. It's the worst problem. People whose whole life concerned to, to, to ruin your meetings. <laughs> and they, they won't give up the microphone. You have to have the police drag them out. Every single meeting has been like that. All they want to do is give their rants. Now, we have this one guy that his theme is that this should be a place that turned into a place of healing to, account, to atone for the American atrocities. You see, so I don't know what that means. So the town councils are the three towns that inherit this. They don't want people like me coming in and telling them what to do is going to be with their land. You know, you know, don't tell us what to do with our land. And they have different ideas of what to do with it. The New Jersey governor, government hovers over our shoulders. And I'm not too sure how independent we really are. The governor has to approve our, our minutes. The army doesn't care what we do with the land, but they want money for it. They own the land, they want their money back. So if we want to make a park, we got to buy the land, and we got to get the money from somewhere. The public doesn't come to our meetings, our public meetings. The only people that come are the special interests, you know? And the environmentalists, you know, we work with the EPA, the federal and, and New Jersey e EPAs, and there are environmental issues, but it, as the EPA says, it's no worse than most places in New Jersey. But nonetheless, there are environmental people who say, Don't do, you can't do anything with this land. You're trying to poison the people of New Jersey, and, um, uh, and you're covering up everything. At the, you know, we're doing various nefarious things. The developers who are going to develop this, we put out a, a, a request for a proposal for a town center. We want a walking town center with coffee shops and restaurants and little places where people can congregate. And what do they want to do? They want a big box store. They want to put a Walmart there because that's what they make money for. And we're fighting that kind of a battle. Affordable housing could sink the whole thing. Uh, it's, it's a tremendous problem since the Mount Holly uh, 
judgment here in New Jersey. Nobody knows, knows what the rules are. We've, we've been sued once already, we'll be sued again. We've set aside 20% of all housing developments for affordable housing, but that's not enough for the affordable housing advocates who've targeted us. And uh, it's very possible we could be hung up many, many years in, in, in suits about this. Finally, money. We need money to do everything. We've got to buy the land from the Army, and we don't have any money. But those are all the realities. But I still have my dreams, and I'm hoping that some years from now that I can walk down the street and think, we did it. Thank you.